Hey guys, uh, this is also my first time uh, speaking in English. Uh, so I, if I will forget everything in the middle of my uh, speech, please forgive me. Um, so briefly, who I am? I'm Lida. I'm. Uh, I was a product designer for six years and worked in companies such as Sky and Samokat. Chat Fuel, ManyChat, main competitors is here. Uh, and then I became, became a product manager and worked for two years. I also launched two startups that did not succeed. And from last year, me, my friends and I uh, started working on the third one. And uh, we have been doing it full time since July. Um, yeah. So uh, we are making a tool, a topic-based tool for asynchronous communications um, for remote teams. For example, if you want to discuss a specific topic, you can create it uh, instead of uh, blowing up your team's chat or holding an unnecessary meeting. And you can discuss it with uh, video, audio, and text messages, and then just close it with a conclusion when it's done. And uh, we are a team of three people, three co-founders. We launched our new versions, new version in February. Uh, now we have 1,100 users, and we also became second product of the day on Product Hunt. Um, and today I am going to share with you my struggles and learning learnings on the path of transformation from product designer to founder. Um, yeah, and uh, quick notes, why have I started making my own product? Um, I realized for myself that this is the quickest and best way to understand how product and business processes work. And uh, even if your idea won't succeed, Creating an MVP when you study the market, communicate with potential customers, uh, try, try to find out the marketing channels, um, design a quickest way to test your solution will give you more insight than a few narrowly focused tasks in a big company. And the other thing, I just like to grow uh, horizontally more than vertically. I like to learn um, relationships between things and dive into separate areas more than perfect my skills in one particular area, which is, by the way, completely normal. And uh, at some level of company, these people drive the primary growth and lead to success. Um, yeah, so what? Have I found, what differences have I found started building my own products? The first one, uh, you, um, you don't have a quick result or a quick evaluation. And uh, working um, in a corporate job, I'm used to the fact that um, evaluation of the work done comes pretty quickly. Uh, for example, if we were launching a test in a few weeks or one month, we were able to summarize the results. But if you make your own product, um, this, the whole process uh, can be delayed uh, because you don't have enough resources to do something quickly and you can spend like months doing something and uh, not get any result. And you can find yourself in a situation when uh, there is no feedback and uh, there is a feeling that you're not, do not doing anything and not moving anywhere. Uh, for example, when you start this startup, Biseda, it's called, <laughs> called Biseda, I forgot to mention it. We, it took us two months to research and uh, design our first prototype, then three months to build an MVP because we only have one developer and then two months to test the beta with our first users to just truly realize what our customers need, need and uh, what the problems are. The next thing, um, quite obvious, but you have to communicate a lot with people. 
And if you are the person who, like me, an hour before a party or a conference, <laughs> uh, think I don't want to go, and why did I even agree? Uh, you have to deal with it, live with it, and fight, fight with it. Uh, for example, after our first launch, um, there were eight meetings booked with me on the next day and a few several days before they were five meetings every day with potential customers and uh, investors. Uh, and you can't run away from it because you will not understand what your customers want or you will not um, collect the database of uh, networks who will give you advice, reference or potential investments. And uh, other thing, the product doesn't evolve if you can't do, if you don't do anything. Again, quite obvious, but if you work uh, in a corporate job and, for example, you go on vacation, the company keeps moving and someone even can do a job. But if it's a three uh, people team like my, uh, it can put off for a long time. Um, for example, when the war started, uh, me and my team just physically and emotionally can, could, couldn't do anything. And our product just, has, uh, just stopped for a month and a half. And it was after our launch, our, our second version launch, we promised our customers to add features. We needed to onboard them to our new product. And we did, just didn't do anything. Um, and all of our plans shifted, and um, yeah, some co some competitors uh, run ahead. So, a um, few tips that I want to share with you: what I learned, and uh, I believe that these tips uh, may be useful not only for founders, but also for product managers or product designers, because some of them immerse into the product uh, in a level they they feel themselves like founders uh, at a level of motivation. So first thing that I learned for myself that um, I re realized that external evaluation is not the only way to feel progress. Um, if the task requires a long collection feedback cycle, you need to look for an opportunity to find a way to um, feel the progress and sense of movement from inside. Um, for example, we have a Google or a Notion doc where put, we put all our high-level goals for each week and months, and we track them every every day. Uh, yeah, and we share everything what we have done. Yeah. Uh, you can see <laughs> that this week was not so productive because <laughs> I was preparing to this conference. Uh, yeah, so, and we also um, split our task in detail as much as we could to just uh, feel, uh, to have this feeling of progress. Uh, the next thing, I structured my rules for meeting. Meetings, uh, breaks between them, no more than certain amounts of meetings per day. And uh, I also find found helpful uh, scripts for most types of meetings. I have prescribed questions for everything and templates for every answer. And uh, this uh, can bring less emotional parts, this mechanizing work uh, can bring less emotional part and you just have something to rely on. Next thing, uh, add a task that will bring pleasure. And uh, it can be a fancy animation, a small task that can be done in a couple of hours. But it's just uh, something that um, adds some pleasant to your product. Uh, it helps me a lot to uh, keep motivated and uh, feel joy even if I overload it with uh, routine and bureaucratic tasks. For example, we added these errors to switch between discussions and it wasn't necessary, but uh, because we have a list of discussion and you can click back and find the discussion you want, but we just wanted to add something pleasant to the product. 
Uh, and the last thing every day I have on I, I have on my to-do list a task. Uh, plan one main um, plan at least one one important thing that will bring you to the result. And even if I don't have energy to do anything, I know that there is a minimum uh, for me to do may not require a lot of time, but will bring me to the success e and uh, keep my day uh, useful. And yeah, that's it. Uh, now we are on the open uh, beta, and I would love to hear your feedback on the QR code. You can go to the link and uh, find the public discussion in Beseda about this conference. Please share your thoughts your opinion about me, <laughs> about the presentation. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for attention. Thank you for your presentation. It was really useful. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first question is how the idea came to make such product. And the second one, uh, how uh, the ideas come for the new features. For example, like today you get up in the morning and think, oh yeah, I should make this feature. How this idea comes to you? Okay, uh, so the first question. Uh, first of all, I have a Notion doc where I put all my shitty ideas and uh, forget about them in in a case if I we need to pivot, uh, pivot our product and we need to idea. Uh, but this specific idea came when the pandemic uh, has started and uh, we all became remote, um, remote workers and uh, we all uh, have started feeling this overwhelming from Zoom, Zoom and uh, chats in our corporate messages and uh, that's why we we feel this pain and we want to do something we try some we, we tried some solutions uh, but it didn't fit our vision of how the perfect solution should be and that's why yeah we trying we decided to try it um, yeah and I just uh, suggest all of you if you wanted you want to start a project maybe in the future to create an ocean dog where you can put every idea even if you I don't know in a breakfast or in shower or somewhere um, yeah the other question uh, first of all we have a slack community where every our customer who want to share with us anything can share and some of them um, bring some ideas which we can use to develop uh, and uh, maybe the main idea base for me is uh, the everyday talks with customers because we are on that uh, stage of the startup that we need every day to talk with them um, yeah and they if you give the uh, speech to your customers uh, they can give a lot of insights to you about your products and yeah and of course uh, as Anna told in the previous presentation using your own product uh, helps as well hi and thank you for your presentation I'm here uh, okay <laughs> uh, so as you mentioned Slack, I was going to ask a question about the Slack. So um, I, I may have not got the insights of the, about the project, about the product. So what is the difference between your product and the Slack? Or maybe what were the missing, um, what were, what, what, which um, like features were missing in Slack or may, maybe other um, chats used in, like, for working that you decided to start your own? OK, you. yeah, nice question. Asked every time. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, the main thing uh, for now, because we it's our second version and we change a bit our vision of the product. The main thing now that differentiates us from Slack or like, I don't know, Discord, maybe if someone using it for corporate chats, uh, is um, 
discussion-based structure because, for example, if you have a design channel in Slack, you discuss every topic here and uh, every uh, discussion immersed into another discussion and you can, you can track the flow of the discussion. You can use the threads, uh, but it also can be like, uh, for, for us, it, it uh, can't, uh, we can't use it because, yeah, we just find out that it's not the best way how to keep the dis uh, discussion structured and uh, keep the all information about specific topic in one place. So, yeah, main idea right now is that what I said, maybe in a month it will change completely. That's okay. And we, we are ready to like rebuild our products from the scratch. Uh, right now is this idea. First uh, idea, like a year ago, we just wanted to make um, a chat with video, corporate chat with video, audio, and text messages. But then Slack, two months later, released their feature, and we sat together and started creating a new vision. So, yeah, that's. This is a process that we are doing the whole time right now. Um, yeah, I hope I answered the question. Uh, hi, it's always interesting to listen um, to other specialists from our field. Thank you for your uh, presentation and sharing your experience. Um, my question is the following. We know that uh, every brand has its voice and uh, UX writing creates this voice uh, which can be game changer in, um, uh, in between alternatives in the marketplace. Uh, how can you describe your uh, brand voice of your product and uh, on what it's um, uh, based on, uh, what experience you have uh, before creating a new product. Uh, so, um, uh, do you prioritize uh, UX writing uh, before creating something? Uh, okay, so now we don't <laughs> prioritize it at all because we have only three people and uh, I used to do all the um, writing on my previous startups uh, and uh, I quietly do can do something, uh, but uh, we have, um, how to say, like, reader and uh, person with uh, uh, English native, an English native speaker who just look at all of, of our marketing text or interface text and they, uh, she just uh, tell us this should be this and this should be like this. Um, our strategy for some future content marketing or maybe some internal interfaces uh, writing is to uh, propose themselves as, 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 as an expert in the remote communication inside the small team like design team or like maybe marketing agencies where you need to discuss a lot visual stuff. Yeah, just based on this idea that we we built, we already built this process on our previous um, jobs, and in this uh, particular step startup, we can help you to do the same with with the help of our uh, tool or just with the help of some consulting or whatever. I have a question regarding onboarding. I think that um, basically your uh, product has somewhat com common experience, yes, because uh, people use Slack, people use some similar uh, apps too, but uh, I mean, uh, even if you have some new features, this is somewhat common experience, and I would like to know uh, if you felt that you need some onboarding in your app, and uh, if you have one, did you use some third-party applications to make it, or you did it yourself in your company or you're using your uh, developers and designers um, time for that? Uh, yeah, for sure onboarding right now is the, one of the main priority for us because uh, right now our problem is uh, users that came to our product <coughs> didn't 
uh, last long with it and uh, we have a quite bad retention uh, because they don't understand what they need to do in our product and what use cases they can um, use. Uh, so yeah, we um, use Intercom uh, just for some small features like tooltips or I don't know, help helping uh, helping stuff. Uh, but mainly our onboarding that we have right now, we we build with our main resources, our resources of one uh, developer. Uh, but yeah, I think we will um, evolve this because I think this that's uh, one of the main important thing, not only for the products, uh, but for the startups as well. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you so much for overcoming your introverted personality and coming here, coming here and uh, sharing your experience with us. And also, um, you said you got an MVP out the door in uh, three months with one engineer. That's very impressive. So kudos for that. And um, tell him. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm curious, like quitting your job and starting a company is one thing. It takes courage, but it's your life. How did you choose and then how did you um, convince the engineering co-founder to join the company? Um, so we just told him that he won't be our co-founder if he <laughs> didn't quit his job. Um, yeah, okay, I'm joking. Um, we it didn't we don't we didn't have like the talk with where we should convince him to do it because he understood it and the development part is the most um lacking part with our product right now and when we were working part time on our uh startup and full time in a corporate job it uh was clear that we need more resources for developing. Um, and the, the other thing that I don't know if the common, we just set and create Excel documents with all of our finances and we just look how, uh, how much money we have for, for, the, for what period of time. And we just realized that we can, uh, we can do it until the December and uh, we can uh, not change our life completely. Uh, so it's, I think it helped us to do this uh, decision because we know that we knew that we have, we have a financial stability for some time, but then, okay, on December, we run out of, run out of money and we had to find a part-time job, but that's, also completely okay uh, when you're doing this. 